Well, guys, this is the video I told you I was going to do to show you how to, you know, drive to get better gas mileage and so forth. Took me forever to get it to work. Uh, this has not been, <laughs> this has not been fun. So, uh, it's very long. I do apologize for that. I did, I tried to edit as much as I could, but, you know, I tend to babble and talk for long periods of time, you know, talk about multiple things. So, I do apologize for the length, and uh, it's not really good to make these things too long, but it is what it is, and I do apologize for it. Um, I, I, like I said, I cut out as much as I could. Uh, I hope it's helpful a little. Um, I had to do a you know, a lot of fooling around with it to get it to work. Uh, sorry about the shake on the camera off and on. Uh, I'm working on that. Uh, you know, this is what happens when you use cell phones. The holders don't hold very well sometimes. So, uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> I doubt it was worth the wait. Uh, but hopefully it, it, it serves some purpose for you and it gives you something to look at, okay? So, uh, it's now 4.36 a.m. in the morning and I'm encoding it and I'm going to put this together with it and probably have to encode it again. So, it's probably going to look like total crap. Uh, either way, I hope you enjoy the video. Take care. Okay, guys. What you're seeing here is probably the toughest setup I have for filming. This camera is literally almost right in my eyesight, so I have to be careful about drive. I'm gonna try to give you an idea of how to keep yourself in the zone for driving. I'm not gonna be using much of the uh, of the cruise control. So this is gonna be a fun drive. It's also gonna be very edited. Gotta be here very careful with this drive. Very interesting. I don't even know if any of it's gonna film. This is gonna suck, guys. Things I do for fame, and you guys don't even send me pennies. I want pennies. Send me pennies. Consider it gas money, because that's all the gas money you need for this car, right? <laughs> well, I'm driving to work today. I don't know how well this is going to come out. I could tell you this camera is in scary territory. Um, as I said, it's right at my eyesight. So it's kind of like having a big block in my face. Now, gas mine is going to be kind of rough today because the wind is very high. And the wind is very touchy on this car. That is just the way it is. I may engage the cruise control at times because, well... It's natural for me to be under cruise control. I also may turn on some radio, <clears throat> regular music, so forth. I'll be interested to see how much of this shows up on camera, especially with the bright light. The car's a little over half charged. I am in eco mode. <clears throat> and as I said, this is gonna be a chopped up video. Now, I don't think my paddles are on video. No, they aren't. I'm just video, gonna videotape the actual power range meter, give you some idea. And then I'll probably aim the camera down at the paddles if I can and show you some paddle work. Uh, I'll probably put this together as a multi video. I finally found a little editor I can actually figure out. Uh, you gotta remember, I'm an old man and I'm not particularly smart. So, but right now I'm gonna be driving pretty much almost all uh, exclusively by gas. And I'm gonna try to show you the best way <clears throat> to use your system. As you can see, you got your whole range here. The first blue section is where you wanna to try to stay in as much as possible. It's not always feasible. Sometimes you may get into a, uh, a heavy duty, um, uh, a heavy duty hill where you're just gonna to have to go into power mode and so forth. And of course, your green down on the bottom is your regenerative, as uh, whenever the car is regenerating, which it does when you take your foot off the brake, when you use your paddles. Um, the more you use your paddles, the more it will uh, regenerate. And uh, of course, this video will probably be boring as hell, but uh, just want to give you some idea. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive, try to drive conservatively, try to stay underneath those power ranges and stay within that first blue section. You can still get up to speed mostly, like as far as I could tell. So this area is about 25 miles per hour. And we're running in the standard range. And you let the car decide whether to go in EV. Some people, uh, you know, like the hypomilers and all, they're gonna be a little smarter about how they do it. Um, 
They probably know, oh, you can you can pop your EV now and use that. I, I, I'm not that intelligent, guys. I'm just trying to give you a general idea of how the power range uh, unit works and how to try to keep your mileage as best as possible. Uh, again, it's very windy today and it's going to kill the mileage. This car is very susceptible to wind as far as mileage is concerned. In fact, that's something this car is, car is very susceptible across the board to many things. That's why a lot of people were saying, where's the gas mileage? Well, as I said, if you want pure gas mileage and you don't have to deal with anything ever, I mean, this car under good circumstances is going to give you great gas mileage anyway. But when, you know, if you, if you don't want to have to deal with anything at all, at all, it, it, the Prius is definitely going to be the better choice for you in that aspect. Uh, but what we like about this car is it drives sporty, even, even though it doesn't have a massive amount of power. It has more than the Prius. I think the Prius is, uh, clocks in at about 130 horses. Uh, this one clocks in about a 151. Uh, again, we're not talking about massive numbers here, but, you know, they all work pretty well. Uh, to get you get you from point A to point B. Uh, plus, this car has got a sporty mode. Uh, I'd be very interested to see what a sporty mode on a Prius would be like. Uh, they're actually very nice cars. I like the Priuses. I really do. Uh, and they've improved their styling this year. They chilled it out a little, so it's a little better choice. Uh, but it's still, the interior is still a little too weird for me and for my taste. So I don't know how um, this is gonna hold up on filming because of the brightness. Last time I had a lot of trouble with brightness uh, problems. I'm using my Galaxy, my old Galaxy S5 up top to film the uh, road as I drive. And I'm using, uh, I'm using my nine, my 10 plus aiming down at the uh, power meter. Again, this is very strange for me. I'm always driving a cruise control here and this is the first time I'm driving without cruise control. Um, so going downhill, we could use the paddles, but there's really no reason. We're not breaking any extra speed. Maybe as we got to stop coming up ahead, we could use a little bit of paddle, tap it just once. That'll slow us down a little, but it's not going to give us much at this point because quite frankly, we didn't have enough speed to make that much of a difference. Um, and then the regeneration re resets itself. Uh, regeneration uh, paddles are only going to stay on, uh, for, until your complete stop or until you you know get down to a low speed and you know and then the regeneration is really not doing anything and the rest of it's mostly just uh, your calipers engaging but um, in sport mode you can keep it running all the time and basically uh, you can have a constant form of regeneration going on your car if I tap the brakes a little here we get a little bit more charge very nice then we get a nice blue Forester from Charlie's. Charlie's, that's where I got this car. Great guys. I'm going to probably take him in for my 5,000 mile checkup. We're at 4,924 on this puppy. Uh, she's getting uh, she's getting old. I'm going to spray my windshield there. That's something else I like about this car. These windshield wipers are really good. Uh, I've never had good luck with windshield wipers. Uh, usually I buy them. They're good for about a month and then they go to crap. Uh, I'm going to have to edit a lot of this out because I don't think you guys want to... Oh my god, the sprayer is actually hitting my back window. I think maybe we need a little aiming done on that. Uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, editing probably on this because I'm just going to have to sit here and talk like a doofus the whole time, acting like a complete moron. Um, and you really don't want to see that. Plus, this is just a starter of the drive. What I might actually do is just restart the discussion when we get into a regular driving situation because right now I'm just getting to my little back road and the back road is where I generally, how I generally drive to work. This is just getting to it. Uh, this is how Maine generally is. We, we don't have all that many <laughs> big highways. Uh, you know, we are very rural out here. I mean, we got cities and, you know, it's not like we're, we're total nit. Whoops, see, almost went into power range there. We got to be careful. But then again, I don't want people jamming up behind me. Uh, happily here in Maine, people are generally pretty calm. Uh, they're not the best drivers. We'll use our paddles. Not really necessary. And again, we're not gonna get all that much. Basically, I find standard braking to work better uh, at speeds like this. Where I usually use my paddles is when I'm in cruise control and I go down a very steep hill, um, I will engage my cruise control. 
uh, because the speed will increase beyond normal cruise control levels. Uh, and the car will, um, you know, it, it'll increase uh, faster. And then I just use my uh, paddles to add some regenerative. <clears throat> so I send some power back to my batteries and it drops my speed back down to the speed I had set on the cruise control. Um, that's just the way it is for most controls, cruise controls do that anyway. Many times you might find that I'll go over the power range because, well, this is not how I usually drive. Uh, but I tell you right now, if you have the cruise control on, it's a lot more aggressive. It'll throw you right into the power range very quickly, especially when trying to increase to uh, certain speeds. All right now we're in the EV mode. Nice and calm. I like how quiet the car is. The car has kind of like a, like a humming kind of noise um, when you're driving it. Uh, Ooh, those are obviously the tires on, on the road. I happen to like that sound. It's something I like about this car. And I like that I don't have that much, um, let's say, uh, engine noise going on much of the time. Of course, you'll end up with the drone when you're going up a hill uh, sometimes. Uh, you know, for more information, go to uh, www.gen3insight.com. Uh, it is .com. Uh, and, you know, they'll talk a little bit more about better ways to, to, to deal with uh, hills, especially large hills. Many of them like to, to pick up a lot of battery power by going into sport mode and building up the uh, battery power. That way they can use more EV as necessary. Then they can cruise down the hill in pure EV. Um, I've never understood why the cars go EV going down. It always seemed like it made more sense to go EV going up since that's when the engine would work the most to use the most gas. But I'm gonna work on the idea that Honda actually knows just a little bit more than me, although I know that their uh, cruise control does not work as well as it's supposed to. Uh, I know their radar isn't as good as it should. And maybe while we're driving, we'll pick up some uh, errant uh, brake uh, alarm messages. That's something else that we're gonna get into a discussion about this car. This car's tech is very good, especially for the amount of money you're paying. You get a lot of tech, uh, safety tech in this car, and it works pretty well overall. However, and I put this big however, <clears throat> it's not 100% set for prime time. It does have its issues. Um, there's a fair amount of discussion um, on the uh, forums concerning the uh, uh, concerning uh, errant brake uh, errors. Uh, for instance, uh, the, when I say brake errors, it's the um, automated braking system, emergency braking system. And some people have actually gotten physical brake responses from the car. Uh, I don't think I've ever gotten a physical brake response. I need to slow down here. It's 30. See, this is why I use my cruise control. I drive a little fast and it's actually 25 and I don't go do fast and get a ticket here. <clears throat> but they, they're talking about either potholes or shadows causing errant uh, brake alarms. I... I don't, I haven't had anything like that, but I have had brake alarms before. Uh, and I've never had the brakes engage. Usually, and you can do the settings in the screen. Usually I've had this issue. Uh, all right, before I get into it, let's, we're going to increase to 45 here without going into power range, hopefully. Now the engine is engaging. We went out of EV mode as the car is charging the batteries as I increase speed to 45 miles per hour. But I can still, you see, we stay out of the power range and we're already up to 41.2 miles to the gallon. It's gonna be very touch and go with the mileage uh, at this point. What I'd like to do is set my cruise control. And generally, I think once you're in flat terrain, cruise control is pretty safe. And I'm gonna go ahead and set that puppy. Actually, we're going a little fast. We'll set it at 46. I also wanna see, show you how the cruise control kind of overdoes it sometimes uh, when it's probably not necessary. But here we'll be able to stay nice and calm. But getting back to the brake alarms, I've had these brake alarms happen when the car works on the assumption that I should be hitting my brakes to slow down and then I'm approaching a car too closely, I mean too quickly. Um, that's, I think it overreacts sometimes. Uh, I'm not sure the calibration on these cars, or at least in this particular system that's on this particular car, is quite correct. Um, I, I, I maybe I shouldn't get too deep into this. This is mostly for the for showing gas mods, but I, I think it just overreacts. And I mean, you can set distance for when it responds, but it still overreacts. And as I said, we've had some people who have actually had brake 
responses where the car literally hit the brakes. Uh, we also had a recent story that somebody got his butt saved because uh, someone just pulled right in front of him uh, on the highway and his car, you know, before he had a chance to slam on the brakes, slammed the brakes for him. So it's not to say that our systems stink. They're just not really up to snuff, and the easiest way for me to tell that is with my Ford Fusion, which is much better, and we're gonna get into a comparison with that later. So you can see, even with the cruise control, still keeping within, below the power range, but it is taking a little bit more power now to hold it up, going partially uphill. Now it's getting close to the power range. We're still running a dual motor and, uh, dual motor and um, battery. Car's probably running on battery. I mean, I could show the power flow, but the power flow is quite frankly kind of pain in the butt. Uh, and kind of stupid. At least in my opinion, it is. And we're going to see how well it can hold in cruise control. But as I said, the cruise control is a little bit more aggressive. If you were driving yourself, you would probably find you would probably lose speed a little bit more and then, you know, gain back to your cruise, uh, to the speed that you want to go if you want to stay below the power range. Uh, and the steering is working now too. I love I love the steering. It is so much fun. Uh, as I said, planning your trips. This is one of my plans. Now there is a bit more hills on here than most people than most people would probably like. We're probably going to see some power readings here because we got a big hill coming. Well, big as far as a little main hill is concerned. <clears throat> In order to keep the uh, car within uh, its cruise control speed. Now I may override. And we're up to. Uh, Normally, you know, you could use your, you know, as you can see, we got some regenerative there. Now, see there? See, it went right into the power meeting. Now, instead, I'm going to take over here, and I'm going to try to stay below the power rating and keep the speed reasonably close. Now, we've lost some speed. Speed limit's 45, and we're, down, we're almost at 45, and I'm still staying below the speed limit. Now, we're going to lose a little going uphill right here, but we still stayed below the power rating by using our own feet. And get us back up to 45, and then we can resume the cruise control. Now the cruise control can take better form on a flatter, more downhill range. It can handle it better. That's what I was talking about, guys. The cruise control is aggressive. Its intent is to keep you at your speed, so it's going to be slamming on that gas a little bit more. Uh, you need to take control of your car if you're looking to get the best gas mileage uh, possible. I don't know how much uh, it's really gonna show in form today. As I said, the car is very susceptible to outside uh, influences. We're in EV mode, as you can see now, driving nice and pretty. Very comfy, very comfy. Temperature is also 39 degrees, so it's still a little on the cold side. So the car is heating up. I have it set to 68 degrees. Uh, as I said, I am not driving around without heat. Uh, anybody who wants to drive around with heat, well, <laughs> you're a better person than I because I ain't doing it. It just ain't happening. Hey, 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 don't be going into the power range. That cruise control likes the power range. It will engage it and it will hit. And that's another reason I said don't drive like me. Although I consider this, oh, I just hit my head against the thing. I hope I didn't screw up the video. It's probably already screwed up anyway. All this talking's for naught. Um, that's another reason I said not to drive like me. I drive on cruise control, and the cruise control is going to take you into the power range all the time. If you watch your power range, you're easy on your gas pedal. You'll do just fine. See, it just hit the gas there, trying to catch up speed, but it stayed below the power range. The engine engaged, though. Uh, probably to send more uh, uh, juice into the battery. As you see, the battery's down to four bars. Now, you tend to have higher battery bars if you run in normal mode. Yep, power trying to get it up to keep speed. This is where you're gonna have troubles with cruise control. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take it out of cruise control. I'm gonna stick with my own driving. I hate doing that because I can't keep speed very well. You see all the blowing leaves. You can see it's very windy out here. See here, if you let your foot off the gas, it's going down, it automatically does a little bit of regenerative all on its own. But we're holding at 45 miles per hour. We're still staying below that. So if you run it normal, I think it'll usually take the bars up to about five, five or six bars. Sport will run the engine almost continuously and knock your bars way up, uh, giving you a lot more time to use your EV mode. EV mode is also very dependent on temperature, uh, whether the car is still warming up, is it still in its warming cycle, etc., etc. Yeah, generally, if you drive without your cruise control, 
except on the highway. If you're on a straight, flat highway, most of the time, keeping at speed, that's your, that's where the cruise control is going to work fine. But if you are uh, on a road like this, where there's a lot of hi little hills going up and down, the car is going to constantly go into the power range in order to um, in order to keep you uh, purely at your 45 miles per hour. So you got to keep that in mind, and that's why I don't drive like me. And as I said, it's 39 degrees, so our gas mileage isn't going to be as good. Also, we're at the beginning of a tank. So the average fuel mileage that you may be seeing here changing, and it seems to be changing wildly, <clears throat> we're still very early on the tank. So those numbers are going to flop back and forth quite a bit until we get to about a half a tank. Then you're going to start getting a good idea of what it really is. Now we're getting ready for a speed increase going up to 50. Uh, if you anticipate, you can add a little bit more power and start speeding up right now. And now we're up to 50. Very good. So just trying to show you how to use your gauges. And the auto steering is doing very nicely, which is very strange. Usually, um, this camera has a lot of trouble with the lines on this road, which is ridiculous because the lines on this road are very bright and typical. I'm wondering if being on cruise control has more to do with it, but that doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. See, it's lost the lines now. A little bit of darkness. It's, it really, this car, well, I've lost speed there too. So this is another reason I like using my cruise control. I lose that speed. I had to add a little power. Engine engage. I'm sure you heard it. And someone's passed me. I'm not going fast enough. But you see, they're very generally very nice here in Maine. They'll just pass you. Most of them won't tailgate you too much. You saw what happens when somebody tailgates me. <clears throat> that one, that was a special situation, guys. That person did not tailgate me. I was going to speed limit. This guy came flying into the back of me. I mean, he was going at least 15 miles per hour above the speed limit, maybe 20. And he came flying right up to my back end. And he was maybe within a foot of my rear end. And that's why I got so annoyed. Uh, I don't mind if people creep up behind you, flash their lights or whatever, you know. Even toot every once in a while if you're not paying attention. Because uh, I was in the left lane at the time. But uh, he was a real weenie about it. And I don't like people who do that. I consider that very dangerous. Uh, aside from the fact that you can end up with a lot of road rage is issues. <clears throat> so I hope this video gave you some idea on uh, on the uh, on how to keep your uh, power within the power range. Very important. See, we're already up to 42.1. But then again, like I said, the 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 the, the MPG is going to show quite a bit right now because it's very early in the tank. And when it's early in the tank, it's constantly changing. I'm going to try to get a video of my um, of my um, paddles to show you the use of the paddles as I go down a hill. Uh, I'm going to have to change the uh, video direction of this camera, so I'm probably going to pull over. <laughs> keep everything running. <clears throat> I apologize. I just woke up. So you know, when you wake up, uh, I don't smoke, but I still get a lot of phlegm. I'm an old man. So I do uh, tend to cough a lot early. Here's a situation where we're going from a 50 to a 35 mile per hour zone. This is where I would use my paddles. And what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to take my foot off the gas. I'm going to tap my paddle. I'm gonna tap it a second time, get a little extra thing, drop it down to lower speed. Normally I would hit my cruise control, which is what I'm going to do this time and engage my cruise control. And I gained just a little bit of power by anticipating the stop coming ahead. There was nobody behind me, so nobody to be offended. That's just a, a quick idea of how you can use the paddles. All right, I'm gonna pull over and I'm gonna re-aim this camera. I'm gonna do a little downhill here. Speed increase, yep. So I use a little bit regenerative, add a little bit of power in there. Then I hit my resume, go right back to speed. That's not really a, a great example but it shows you a small example of how you can gain just a little bit of power out of nowhere going down a hill. The speed was increasing, plus I'm behind us, you know, there's a school bus and another car and the school bus is, uh, well, going below speed limit. I guess that's okay. And uh, then I got this guy right here and, you know, he's keeping his distance and uh, I guess the car keeping the best distance it can behind him. So it's probably gonna ruin my ability to show you my paddles and how I did it, but as I showed you, did a little paddle going down that little micro hill. <clears throat> I'm sure 
<clears throat> if you could have seen the thing, you would have seen uh, the uh, needle dip down into the green. It's one third. Yeah, normally I don't go to work this late. I'm an hour later today than usual. I guess they're trying to cut hours. <laughs> I guess they're trying to cut me. But, um, you know, so I don't normally have a school bus in front of me. And uh, having a school bus in front of you kind of sucks. Nothing against the school. I don't like schools either. I didn't like school when I was in it. School kind of sucked. And I'm going to edit this shit out too because it's annoying. And there, there was that huge freaking shake from the car. Decrease into 40 mile per hour zone. I'm going to hit this, drop the speed down. Get a little bit of regenerative. Hit the cruise control. Boom. Now she's set at 41 miles per hour. That's how I tend to use my paddles. That, and anytime I go down a big hill during cruise control. This is the hill that usually I use my paddles on. It's a deep hill. My speed is set at 41. I'm at 41, going up to 42, 43, and it gets steep. So I usually hit a single notch, that slows me down. Hit a single, second notch, and a third. I go to maximum, then I decrease one, hit resume. <clears throat> And that's how I gain a little bit of extra power to throw into the batteries. And I do that pretty much for most of my speed changeovers. I do it for any hills I have to go down. Of course, I got this huge hill to go up, so I pretty much eat everything up going up. But that was just a quick example. And that's about the only paddle work you're really gonna see from me. Uh, I just wanted to give you a general idea, uh, give you guys some ideas of what it, what it looks like, what the power meter looks like and how to use it. Uh, it's not a particularly good video. I do apologize for that. It's gonna be all edited and messed up and Excuse me. And I bet uh, <clears throat> me sitting here hacking half the time. And I bet with these, uh, you know, with the two cameras just trying to get them uh, to even out, it's not going to it's not gonna be right. In fact, it's pro I'm probably going to give up and just do a single camera, aim at that, and just say, hey, you guys can use your imagination what, the, what it looks like ahead. Got another hill here. Let's see. I'm going to increase speed. Just a little, so yeah, I usually do a single press on this. Second press, I use this one. It's taking too much regen. All right, we're in pretty good shape. Go back to cruise control. And that's not a tremendous amount of power, but every single bit matters that you can get into the batteries. Every bit you can get into the batteries, the better you're off you are. You know what, I'm gonna think I'm gonna cut this thing off now because uh, it's getting kind of stupid. And, and it's gotten so long, it's ridiculous. So this is Verdier, uh, hacking my brains out for the whole drive, <clears throat> getting ready to hack again. Uh, signing off, and I hope if nothing else, at least it gave you a visual representation of what it looks like to use your paddles, my big hairy Bigfoot hands, um, and, <clears throat> damn it, and how to do, uh, I don't know, you know, just how to get better gas mileage from your car for all those people having bad gas mileage. It's up to 43.2. Uh, so I'm doing pretty well. And that's with the cruise control towards the end here. But using the paddles to regain uh, regenerative. In fact, got another hill coming up here, but that's not gonna make any difference because uh, everyone's slowing down here. So take care, Verdier out.